Good evening, everyone. I hope we're uh, all doing well tonight. Thank you for uh, for joining. <clears throat> we're going to get started here in just a minute. Had a number of late registrants today, so it's going to be uh, hopefully as many people as we can fit. So we're going to give it a couple of minutes. Um, my name is Jay Dallywell. I'm the founder and CEO of Vox Life and Super Patch. Uh, we've been developing neurostimulation technologies, better part of, oh geez, over a dozen years now. It's been a, it's been an incredible <clears throat> journey. Um, and many of the people on the call tonight have joined us on our mission to help as many people as we can with drug-free solutions. And uh, the purpose of tonight's call <clears throat> uh, is to deal with something that actually millions of people across the world are dealing with, which is uh, COVID-induced brain fog. It is a symptom of long COVID, the recovery from COVID. Many people are having challenges uh, with their cognitive functions and reclaiming uh, the sharpness in their thinking and their memory and different things. Um, so, uh, you know, I've been looking at, at the brain fog for a while. I mean, not just as it relates to COVID, but as it relates to chemo, as it relates uh, to other autoimmune uh, dysfunctions that happen. And uh, some incredible work's been done all over the world looking at brain fog and, and long COVID induced brain fog. And I'm gonna share some of those findings with you today. And I'm gonna share my own findings with you in terms of how we've gone about looking at ways to help people. And so I hope you'll find this informative. Uh, our pur my purpose is to help those people that know about our products and know about our journey and know about our mission in terms of how they can best help people and those that don't know about us, introduce you uh, to how we approach problem solving, introduce you to our purpose and our mission. And hopefully you can find uh, some things of benefit, whether it's knowledge, whether it's uh, some questions answered, whether it's raising more questions, or perhaps even the solution that you might feel is right for you. So without too much delay, I'm going to start with... Uh, with this very, it's a short presentation. There's a lot of information. Um, <clears throat> so th there's detail in there that I think is important that we all have to understand and that I'd like for you to try to absorb as much as you can. So let me get started here. So brain fog after COVID infections. <clears throat> So what is long COVID brain fog? So one of the symptoms of initial COVID-19 infection may be brain fog, and it may continue for weeks or months and then become symptoms of long COVID. And it's also possible the brain fog to be a new symptom of long COVID. It may not have been present with the initial COVID-19 infection. So it might be something that's developing after uh, the general uh, and, 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 the, and the generally accepted and recognized symptoms of COVID. Uh, have have dissipated. <clears throat> so what do some sufferers of brain fog, what are they dealing with? They're dealing with challenge, difficulty with concentrating, paying attention, remembering, speaking, finding the right word, uh, comprehending, understanding, planning, problem solving, completing tasks. And there's a bunch of research online. And one of them is a PubMed article. You can see the number there. You can read that where they've gone through and categorizing the prevalent uh, symptoms of COVID related brain fog. And I can tell you that <clears throat> I know a few people dealing with this. Um, it is life altering for those that are fighting it. Uh, it's not an infection uh, per se. It is a, give you the best analogy, it's an echo of an infection. Um, and there's been some, you know, very keen insights that have been discovered over the last two years in terms of where is this coming from? Where is this brain fog coming from? 
because it's very complex and it's very slippery to pin down. Um, so we're gonna go through a little bit of that tonight and share that with you. <clears throat> so the first thing that we wanted to understand that I need to understand was what are the potential mechanisms behind this brain fog? And so what's causing it? What could be triggering it? Why is it being so delayed? So what we need to know. So many people are having ongoing cognitive problems after COVID-19. It might be mild symptoms, but they can develop into long-term problems with attention, concentration, and memory. Um, and it's very similar to patients experiencing something very similar during chemotherapy, often called chemo brain or chemo fog. And chemo fog is related to the inflammation of neurons. And researchers thought that perhaps COVID-19 might, might be causing brain fog sim through a similar pathway. So maybe there's something to do with inflamed neurons. So there was a study supported by the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, the National Institute, and the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, which examined how COVID-19 can affect the brains of mice and humans. And they found that even if the virus never infects a nerve, COVID-19 can cause inflammation in the brain and change how some brain cells behave, much like what happens in chemo fog. Okay, so there's this residual inflammation that's happening in the brain. We'll talk about how that's happening in a little bit here which is causing the change in, the, in how the brain cells are behaving. Uh, and we're gonna talk about that as well. So they did some experimentation and what did they learn? They learned that even a mild case of COVID-19 caused long-term changes to the immune system and neurons, right? And what they found was that there are human immune cells in the brain called microglia that become activated and stay activated or more reactive even weeks later. And when they become reactive, the brain has trouble keeping up with some of its regular tasks, such as making new neurons in the hippocampus, a region of the brain that plays an important role in learning and memory. So there is a daisy chain of things that are happening here. What's obvious uh, to me and to other people looking at this is the complexity of, uh, of the COVID brain fog will require a sophisticated protocol and rehab program, that it is beyond just resetting the cognitive networks. Right? There's a lot of things happening that are not immediately obvious, that are not easily addressable, that are intertwined with complex neural networks. And so what's happening is all of the cognitive networks are compromised as well as the overall neural homeostasis and the HPA access is also compromised, which plays a key role in our immune response. So what's happening here? So what's happening is we get, somebody gets a COVID infection, there's respiratory and other symptom, but there's a hyperactive immune response. That hyperactive immune response causes a cytokine storm, which because of that hyperactive immune response leads to neural inflammation. That inflammation leads to a lack of neural homeostasis, which then also compounds into cognitive network dysfunction, which over time and not a lot of time leads to brain fog, right? This doesn't happen to everyone, but this is the daisy chain of events that are happening to get to brain fog. So you've got an immune system that's not operating normally. You've got neural inflammation. It's throwing uh, your neural, home our neural homeostasis off balance, which is then triggering and, and throwing our cognitive ne networks into dysfunction, which is now this long, torturous output leads to brain fog, right? So it's not just one thing. It's a lot of very terrible things that are multiplying and adding to more things. And the challenge is we can't get in there and easily address it and fix it, right? Behavioral therapies are not gonna fix this. Um, so what do we do, right? We've got it. So the solution is very complex. And on our approach to it, as many of you might know or might not know, we've taken a, a very complex notion of neurostimulation and neural network stimulation and apply it uh, to very specific neural networks and neural functions. So one of the things that, that are getting affected are our cognitive networks. So after neural homeostasis goes out of balance, it triggers a, a, a very drastic dysfunction in the cognitive networks. And the phone may, four main networks that are being impacted here, the first is executive function. Executive function allows one 
uh, to experience the working memory, absorb information, apply to accomplishing tasks, cognitive flexibility, so multitasking, problem solving, um, you know, switching between one thing and another thing in terms of ideation and critical thinking and inhibitory control, the ability not to do something just because you thought about it. So all of these, these things are, are under the executive function, which is a term used to describe these things. And so what is it, what is it, why is it important? Crucial for learning, problem solving, and processing information. The other new cognitive network that gets impacted is the attention network, right? It's how our brain and our mind directs the mind to focus on specific objects. So our ability to pay attention is partially blamed for how far down this page you've made it, right? So if we can't pay attention, we're going to have issues. And it's a major cognitive network. Memory network. Um, Working memory allows us to encode and maintain and manipulate incoming information. So when we make decisions based on data, we're using our working memory. It encompasses all well thought out decisions because we're really, we're connecting instantly data points that are in our memory to formulate uh, decision making. So that's where the executive function takes the working memory and starts using it. And information flow. Not a lot of people talk about information flow, but it's a very critical aspect of cognitive networks and plays a key role in. Uh, brain fog. So information flow is our brain's ability to communicate effectively within itself. So different regions of the brain communicating and sending neural information back and forth. So what does this mean? It means quicker, more efficient connections lead to better decision and faster decisions. Our problem solving and reflexes can all benefit from quicker thinking. So these are the four main cognitive networks. And there's a default network, which is directly tied to our overall homeostasis of our neurology, which is also impacted. So what do we do with this, right? So we've been doing a lot of research in this area for, for a long period of time, right? So what we've done is we've hacked and harnessed haptic perception to enhance focus, to enhance cognitive networks. So we we've, we've really relied on this, this research and what we're doing are, are, mech, are, are utilizing the millions of receptors in our skin to generate signals that can compensate for compromised neural networks. And the prevalent theory behind this is the pattern theory of haptic perception, which, which allows and, and, and propounds that free nerve endings and mechanoreceptors can generate compensatory signals to help reset and optimize attention networks, focus networks, memory networks. And what we've done is deduce a very complex set of receptors on our skin that can translate and transmit those signals. So we've put this technology in different types of patches that through stimulation, help reset and reorganize those neural networks that have come offline. We've done a number of research studies that looked at it. So we can take a look at attention networks, executive function networks. We can take a look at uh, overall homeostasis networks, default networks. And there's a preponderance of research and preponderance of evidence that shows the technology that when we apply it to people's skin, our skin receptors can actually translate that into signals that help reset those different networks that have come offline. So the road back from brain fog. So if we take a look at it, so this is a brain that's been brain mapped before treatment. And you see the dysfunction in the neural cortex, slow sluggish thinking, and you see the memory networks at the back here, not optimally optimized. So green, the, the, the closer we get to green and the yellow, we're normalized and optimized. So you see, uh, <clears throat> The cortex, uh, executive function compromised, you see memory compromised. Um, and then you see here in 60 days, normalization, optimization. So we have suboptimal executive function, suboptimal memory, suboptimal attention, suboptimal information flow. 60 days later, we see optimized executive function, memory, attention, and information flow. So how do we get there? So there's some key steps that I've deduced over the last almost a year and about nine months that I've been looking at brain fog in terms of how does it all the different pieces fit together and how can we help people? So the first step is to get the brain into neural homeostasis is that we can't build on recovery and reclamation until we find baseline of where our normal homeostasis needs to be of our neural networks. It's the first thing we have to do. Secondly, we have to stabilize that homeostasis and hold the change and protect those neural networks from microtrauma. So what are microtraumas? 
uh, injury, infection, illness, stress, all those different things are micro traumas that might knock our neural homeostasis off track and, and put it into a suboptimal situation. And then thirdly, we have to normalize and stabilize the cognitive networks. And it has to be that way. It isn't about just normalizing and stabilizing the cognitive networks. Because if we start building on a crack foundation, and if we start trying to rehabilitate on on a on, on a on a neural networks and the neural and that doesn't have homeostasis, the the more the results aren't going to be where we want them to be. And if they are, they're not going to hold. Right. This is what I've learned over the last nine months. So what's the approach? What do we have to do? <clears throat> like I said, the three parts that I says. So what I suggest and, and what I've used, and that's so what we see here, those results are the culmination of 12 people that I've been working with for the better part of the last six months, nine, you know, six to nine months. And what I see on, on those results is the protocol that I have here. So we start with the Liberty Patch technology, which brings the brain into neural homeostasis, starts on day one. We want to give that three days. Day three, we want to add our defend patch. We used to be called our neurovax patch. And what that does is stabilizes and holds the change and protects the neural networks from micro traumas. So there's no relapsing. It's stabilized. But we want to put that on day three, not day one. We want to get that neural networks as close to homeostasis as we can get them. And, and so what we see is that within the first 48 to 72 hours, we see massive change. And because these are 24-hour use patches, we can maximize the efficacy and maximize the compliance on that. Day six is when we add our flow patch, which helps normalize and stabilize the cognitive networks. We're going to wear all three of these for 60 days. At the end of 60 days, we're going to remove the defend pad and watch and see if the benefits still hold. If it doesn't, put it back on. Also, the option to replace Liberty with HPT socks. So we can also replace uh, the, the Liberty patch at that point if we want to wear socks instead. No problem at that point. We can do it. And what I've seen across all 12 cases that I've worked with is I've seen this change hold. At the end of 60 days, it's holding and they're getting back to a clear brain, a clear mind, and they're getting past all those obstacles of, 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 of the brain fog, right? And which is allowing them to start functioning again, participating in their lives and, and doing what they wanna do. But it wasn't a simple matter of applying one technology. The technology that would be most intuitive to apply first, which is our flow patch, is actually the third one that we have to put on because that's what's gonna allow us to correct uh, the cognitive networks. But unless we prepare the, the mind and prepare the neural networks for that, we're not gonna get that optimal result. So that's what's working. That's what's working with the people that I'm helping. And, and, and the key to this is that we have to stage it. We have to stage it. We have to stage how we use it and then the products that we apply. So I'm gonna stop sharing here. And if anybody, so some questions and answers here. Um, so if, hey, can you guys, I think chat is available. Hold on a second, it's chat. Oh, everyone, here we go. I opened up chat to everyone. So if you guys wanna ask questions, so there's some questions here and I'll take questions for about 15, 20 minutes if we need to. Um, Sarah Reed asked, does this apply to just brain fog in general as well? Uh, no, uh, brain fog, brain fog, um, guys, okay, let, let me get through these questions, and then once we're through, then we can take some more questions. This is applied to brain fog in general. So, so brain fog might be caused by a lot of different things. Could be diet, could be other reasons, uh, could be mistaken for ADHD, could be mistaken for dementia, it could be, so what it is. So this protocol specifically is for COVID slash inflammation induced brain fog because that's what we looked at and that's what we studied right do we do we continue to use the first two patches on day six yes as of day six you're going to wear all three patches for 60 days sounds like a lot but there's a lot to unwind and a lot to undo okay um and so that's why you want to you, you want to you want to make sure that we get it to, to get the brain to get the neural networks back to homeostasis. We want to hold them with a defense patch and protect it from micro traumas. And then we want to add 
the flow patch to correct those cognitive defects, but we want to hold that for 60 days because neuroplasticity is amazing and brilliant, but we have to give our, give our neural networks a chance for those uh, cognitive networks to hold and get back to optimal performance. Um, so I don't think I have long COVID, but I've had brain fog since I had COVID. Is that possible? Don't know, Donna, quite possible, right? Because um, with other cognitive functions like ADHD, ADHD and ADD are not, so this is relating only, Vanessa, only we're talking today about COVID-induced brain fog because that's what we looked at. Uh, <clears throat> if we using the fan for the immune system, in addition to brain, will we have to stop using it and then start the protocol? No, not at all, Stacey, not at all. If you're using it for other things, Add the harmony, uh, add the liberty patch, keep your defend patch on. Um, day six, add the add the flow patch. Where would you recommend wearing the patches? Vanessa, you can wear those patches anywhere you like. That's the beauty of, of the patch technology. Um, and it's absolutely key, uh, key for that. Um, autoimmune brain fog. This is very close to autoimmune brain fog, Terry Lynn Parker. Um, I haven't looked at it specifically. But autoimmune responses usually have some traces of inflammation, so it'll be very, very close to that. Haven't looked at Lyme brain, haven't looked at anything else. This is very, very uh, specific to what we looked at. Uh, prescription only, Donna, there's, there's no chemicals or medication in the product. So these are OTC products. Um, and so you, over the counter, you don't get prescription. There's no chemicals in this. Uh, there's no stimulants in this. There's no supplements in this. These patches have a raised rigid, pat rigid patterns on them that are stimulating very specific receptors in our skin that are generating signals that our brain decodes. Okay. No, they won't interfere with each other, Dan. You can wear them wherever you like, one, one after the other. Just don't put them one on top of each other because that's not gonna work. Um, but you can, you can certainly uh, wear them close to each other or far away. Uh, hold on a second. Da, 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 da. La, 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 la. So, Kyla, the questionnaire actually was we actually did brain maps on them. Uh, the questionnaires were very simple. Um, there's cognitive assessments that we can do that, that are available online that we use, but we also relied heavily on brain mapping to see which neural networks. Uh, we're responding in which neural networks are not responding. Uh, have a, um, no, no, no interference with uh, prescription meds. Um, okay. Uh, Donna, whoever is the person that brought you to this, they can more than happy to help you out uh, to get the, to get the patches, but you can go to voxlife.com if that's easier but the fastest way to ask the person that invited you um, to do that. Hey guys, so brain fog is available and it comes from, seemingly comes from a lot of different places. Today's call and tonight's call is very specific to what we looked at, which was uh, COVID-induced brain fog because it's, it's complex. So this isn't, this isn't lack of focus. This is not ADHD. This is not stress. This is not all those things. This is very specific to us investigating and taking a look at and looking at the research around COVID-induced brain fog and all the different things that are leading up to it. So it's quite complicated um, in terms of how, how, we, how it gets to that, why it lingers so long, right? Because there are so many moving pieces that ultimately lead to this, that's the, that's the reality of it, right? And that's why we wanna, that's why we wanna help people as, as we can, because I know some people even are in, in our networks are, you know, you know, we got some people say, listen, I've been dealing with brain fog, I had COVID, I'm not getting better, I'm wearing the patch, I'm wearing the sleeve. And, and the reality is we're trying to solve cognitive issues when there's a larger homeostasis issue that needs to be solved first. And we have to deal with that first, okay? Um, so that's, that's very, very good. Um, so, so Donna, if you wanna reach out to uh, Vox Life at the customer service. They'll be more than happy to help you out, maybe help find the person that sent you that way. Um, or it's Elsa Wickerington. Yeah, Elsa is probably the person. That, I think Elsa's on the call. Um, and so wearing them is very easy. There's another couple of questions here, guys. We're getting a little bit off track. Um, 
So Candy Scott has a great question. If you're using the Liberty patch, which is on the body for a full 24 hours, are you suggesting if socks are used, they should be worn 24 seven? What I'm suggesting is at the end of the 60 days, take off the patch, observe, we should observe how we're feeling or the person should observe how they're feeling, right? Because everybody's response ultimately is going to be different based on their baseline neurology and how healthy they are, right? Uh, the 12 people that we worked with after, after the 60 days, all they're wearing is, uh, is their flow patch and they're good to go, right? They still wear their socks. So you can try the socks, wear them half the day, all the day. I think at that point, uh, the person has to subjectively evaluate how they're going to respond to that. Okay. Is there a patch suggestion for someone who doesn't know why they have range fog, Sarah? Um, like me? Yeah, sure. I, if, if, if brain fog's your issue, I would suggest that you start with the flow patch, uh, give it a good four or five days um, and see how you feel. And then if it doesn't work for you, then try this protocol and uh and go from there okay um so so that's that's the purpose here guys just to educate uh to help people that that use our products and recommend our products know how to best recommend and help people get the best possible results um and and that's it right it's about helping people um so i hope you guys found uh the call valuable i hope the information was succinct i didn't want to overburden you guys with big long presentation because it's Thursday night and everybody probably wants to get back to watching something on Netflix. <laughs> right. Uh, it just, just simple stuff uh, that we hope that you can use and share and, and that's it, right. Our objective is to help as many people as we can. So um, I hope that was valuable. Thank you for joining us tonight and uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the next call. Um, thank you so much. It is being recorded. It'll be in the back office. Um, so if you guys want to share it with other people, uh, please go ahead. Not a problem at all. Um, thank you so much and have a wonderful evening, everybody. Bye.